We are now ready to turn our attention to SPSS as we learn how to compute linear regression. The example data set that we're going to use is jobsatisfaction.sav. This is the same data set that we used for our correlation example. The data involve 200 counselors and an outcome variable of job satisfaction. It's going to be an overall score. And we want to predict job satisfaction based on what we measure about that individual's level of burnout. The first thing that we are going to do is to create a scatter plot. We'll do that by going to Graphs, Chart Builder. In the Chart Builder, in the gallery, we're going to create Scatter Dot. I'm going to drag that simple scatter plot up into the canvas. Remember, we're using burnout to predict job satisfaction. So let's put burnout on the x-axis and job satisfaction, JS, on the y-axis. Now we're ready to calculate. So click OK. Here's our output. Scroll down. Notice there is no regression line, but do you remember how we added that regression line. Double click anywhere in that scatter plot and we're going to add fit line at total. It's this button right here. Add fit line at total. There it is. It also gives us a y equation plus an r squared value. Let's close the chart editor and that regression line now appears on our scatter plot. Having created that scatter plot, we are now ready to run a regression equation using SPSS. So, because this is an analysis, we're going to go to the Analyze menu, Analyze, Regression, Linear. In the menu that pops up, we are going to use Burnout to predict job satisfaction with job satisfaction being our dependent measure. Now, there are several things to note about this box. The first is that there are multiple methods of entry for these data. By default, the setting is Enter, but we could choose others. Stepwise, Remove, Backward, Forward. The only one that you should be very, very reluctant to use is Stepwise because of the mathematics behind it. I'll do another video explaining the errors of stepwise regression. For now, just use the default entry or the default method, which is Enter. Let's not do anything else. Let's just simply click OK and take a look at the output that we get. In fact, let's go back to PowerPoint and we'll take a closer look at these output data. Our R square of 0.423 tells us that 42.3% of the variability in job satisfaction is explained by variability in burnout. That's our coefficient of determination. Now, we would write our correlation as 0.65 or 650, but we would not write it as 0 0.65 because the R value is limited between positive and negative 1. It cannot be greater than 1. Therefore, we do not use a leading zero. Only if the value could be greater than one would you include a leading zero when you wrote up the number. The next box that we should look at is the ANOVA. Now, you might say, well, wait a second. We learned about ANOVA in the past. What's ANOVA doing here in regression? And the answer is, well, really two things. One is that everything is really a subset of regression. It's really, under the hood, all the same formula, the general linear model. More about that later. But the second reason is that what we're testing is how well the data fit our model. And so the ANOVA, in this case, tells us whether burnout is a significant predictor of job satisfaction. And we will interpret the ANOVA exactly the same way we would when we learned about it a few weeks ago. We need to have our two degrees of freedom, in this case 1 and 198. We need to know the F value. In this case, it's 144.9.
And remember, if there is no effect, that F value will be close to 1. So there's a pretty big F value. Doesn't surprise us at all then that our significance value is 0 0.000, which we would write up as P less than 0 0.001. So we know from the ANOVA that the model is significant, that burnout is a significant predictor of job satisfaction. And we would write that up as F with 1 and 198 degrees of freedom equals 144.94, P less than 0 0.005. Under the coefficients box, we can find the A and B values that we would need to plug into our linear regression equation. Now, they'll both be under a box labeled B, so don't let that confuse you. Both A and B are in that same box. But remember, A is a constant. It is the value that is predicted for Y when X equals 0. So you'll find A listed as constant. Its value is 235.459. The B value is a negative 2.112. We'll round both of those, and here's what we'll say. Plugging in A and B to our regression equation formula, the regression equation for these data is Y prime equals 235.46 minus 2.11 times X. Let's take that formula and use it for prediction. So we see the formula on the right. I would like for you to predict the value of y when x equals 25. Plug in 25 times 2.11. Subtract that from 235.46. What value do you get? 182.71. Now I'd like for you to calculate the predicted Y value for an X of 50, 70, and 120. Pause the video, run those three equations, and then come back and let's talk about what you found. Okay, welcome back. What value do you predict for Y for a person who scores 50 on burnout? 129.96. Notice that as burnout increases, the predicted Y values decrease. It's because burnout has a negative relationship with job satisfaction. What do you predict for a value, X value of 70? 87.76. And an X value of 120? Negative 17.74. So assuming that you've done these calculations correctly, Let's interpret this regression. First of all, go back to your output and answer each of these questions. In fact, you should probably pause the video, answer all of the questions as best you can, and then come back and we'll talk through it. Welcome back. I hope that you've answered each of these questions. Let's make sure you understand how regression works with SPSS. First of all, what was the value for the correlation? That's the R value. You should have a positive 0.65. And again, all of these numbers come from the output in SPSS. Next, is the regression model ANOVA significant? Yes, it is, at less than 0 0.001. That means that burnout is a significant predictor of job satisfaction. How would you write up this ANOVA? Let's see if you remember this. We would include our R value of 0.65 comma F with 1 and 198 degrees of freedom equals 144.94 P less than 001. Great. Now what is the coefficient of determination? What is our R squared value? And that comes from a box that is labeled R squared it is an R squared of 0.423. And what does this tell you about job satisfaction? It tells you that 42.3% of the variability in job satisfaction is due to burnout. When we created our regression equation, what did we calculate as the value of A? 235.46. How about the value for B? negative 
2.11. Now I'll remind you that on your homework you will be doing pretty much exactly these same steps. So make sure you understand where these values come from. Any confusion? Go back to your output. You now know what the answers are. Check the output, check the answer, find out where that answer came from. Now when we did our predictions, one of them was pretty speculative. Which one was most speculative? Well, let me explain this. Let's go back to our output regarding the scatter plot with our regression line. What I'd like you to pay attention to are the values on the x-axis. What's the lowest value? Somewhere around 30. What's the highest value? The x-axis here runs up to 80. The highest actual data point, 71 maybe. So the data themselves run from approximately 30 to 70. But what were the values that we predicted? 25. Is that in the range? It's actually below range, but not by too much. That was somewhat speculative. 50. That's squarely in the range. 70 was the, at the top end of the range, but what about 120? That was far outside of the range. In fact, the predicted value was negative. How can you have negative job satisfaction? I mean, you could have low job satisfaction or no job satisfaction, but negative job satisfaction? Does that mean at a certain point you start getting happier again? That makes absolutely no sense. So. What prediction was most speculative? The value of 120. Why was it so speculative? Why was it not good? Because we were predicting outside of the range. 